All right. All right, everybody. So uh, welcome to the CloudStack Collaboration Conference here in Montreal. I know this is our second time we've been in Montreal uh, in the past couple of years. So it's uh, always nice for me to get a chance to come out here and see uh, everybody again. Um, let's see, so just a little bit about me. I'm uh, Mike Tutkowski. I've been in the CloudStack community for about six years now, actually. Uh, this coming November will be six years for me. I've been the VP of CloudStack since uh, March or April. And um, usually that's just a, a, like a yearly kind of stint that we elect somebody into. So next March or in April, we'll uh, be moving on to the next VP. Um, the last six years, I've actually been a full-time CloudStack software engineer. I uh, started at um, a startup company in Boulder, Colorado, doing CloudStack um, full-time. Uh, Solid Fire was the name of the company. It was later acquired by uh, NetApp a few years ago, but I've been very fortunate to be able to continue on in that role uh, these past three years. It's been a really good experience. I, I love working with the community and making it out to all of these events. Um, as I do work for a storage company, you can kind of see point three. I've been mainly focused on CloudStack storage component over the past uh, five, six years. Uh, especially around uh, quality of service and, and bringing that kind of uh, capabilities into CloudStack. Uh, more generally, I've been in the storage industry for about 12 years and 20 years as a software engineer. So that's just a little bit about me. Let's take a look at some quick notices. Uh, really, there's just a couple. Uh, uh, Andrea Panich, right there in the fourth row back, He's got a really great presentation, uh, successfully running enterprise workloads with CloudStack, KVM, and managed primary storage. It was originally going to be at 2.30 tomorrow in this room. We've actually moved it up to 11.05, but it's the same day, same room. So that, I really encourage people to uh, consider going to that presentation. He did a great job in Berlin a few, few months ago. Um, I especially like the fact that it was a joint presentation, but he did 98% of the work, so it was uh, really, really easy on me. So come check out Andre's presentation tomorrow. That does leave an open slot uh, at 2.30 tomorrow, so I'm actually going to see if anybody has any CloudStack-oriented talks that they'd like to consider doing tomorrow at uh, 2.30. Come, uh, come either see me, or uh, maybe you can find one of the other guys, Giles Surrett up front, uh, a lot of you know him. But it would be really uh, great to have somebody fill in for that 2.30 slot tomorrow. It's in this room, uh, so Tuesday, this room, uh, 2.30. So either let me know, or maybe Giles, or somebody else who you're kind of familiar with. Uh, let's see. So yeah, welcome to Montreal. Just a couple quick facts about uh, the city. It's the second largest French-speaking city in the world, which um, I've actually was fortunate enough to be in both now the first, the first most populous French-speaking country in the world this year. I was in Paris for a couple of weeks in, over the summer, and uh, now I get a chance to come out to Montreal. It's a maybe little known fact that French was my minor in college, although I've never actually used it in my professional life. It's kind of nice to be able to come out to cities like this and, and get a chance to speak a little bit of French. So um, I always like coming out to, to Montreal. Uh, anyways, it has the second highest number of restaurants per capita, so I guess we won't have any trouble finding any food around here. Um, there's a lot of foreign uh, students here, 18,000 foreign students from 150 different countries. And actually, yesterday, we were just at uh, supper, a bunch of us, and I, I noticed uh, the table across from us was a collection of students from uh, Mexico. So you could see that kind of firsthand, that there was uh, a large uh, population of students from different countries, which is always really cool for me to see. Um, one special mention here is for uh, the Cloud Ops, which is a company that's very prevalent in the CloudStack community. 
So Cloud Apps is located in Montreal. I've worked with those guys, uh, Ian Ray, and a whole bunch of uh, them for the past five, six years, almost the whole time that I've been in the CloudStack community. So it's kind of nice to uh, be able to come out to their home city and get a chance to see those guys uh, face to face again. They actually hosted the CloudStack Collaboration Conference two years ago, so 2016, at their headquarters here in Montreal. So it's nice to be able to be back uh, to see those guys in, in uh, their home city. And the last little point there, I guess it's probably the only place we'll see all four of these guys on the same flag at the same time, so cool. So let's take a look at just a quick overview of the CloudStack Collaboration Conference and its history. Uh, this also includes some of the CloudStack Days uh, events that were going on in 2015. So you can see that we actually go back as far as 2012. That was the first CloudStack Collaboration Conference. And not only was that the first CloudStack Collaboration Conference, that was day two for me at SolidFire. So my first day was coming into the office, picking up my laptop, and flying out to Las Vegas. Day two was participating in uh, the CloudStack Collaboration Conference. So that's, uh, that's kind of a really big one for me. Uh, we kind of followed that up with uh, Santa Clara the next year. And I remember that one in particular because that was when I was getting my first uh, code commit into the, the, the CloudStack repo. So that one uh, I kind of distinctly remember as well. And we had a, a ton of great ones. We went to Amsterdam and followed by Denver. I'm actually wearing the Denver ApacheCon CloudStack conference one. That one is, uh, for me, particularly uh, interesting because SolidFire is headquartered in Boulder, Colorado, which is only about 30 minutes from Denver. So it was kind of a weird one for me because I didn't actually get to go to some you know, exotic place to go to the conference. It was basically just a 30 minute drive and I had to fight with traffic and get into the parking garage and it really would have been just from my point of view nicer to go to Amsterdam or something. But hey, you know, it was fun in Denver too. Um, Let's see, we had a whole bunch of them in 2015. Most of those were actually CloudStack Days uh, events. Those were really fun. We did those in Austin, uh, Tokyo, and Seattle. Um, you know, again, just kind of look for more exotic places. I really enjoyed the Tokyo one. That was, was fun to be able to go up there and, and do a presentation where you know people are translating it into Japanese because there's this large Japanese population that comes, to, of course, to the event but they don't necessarily speak as much English, so that was really a very, very bilingual kind of operation that we, we went through there. Um, and then we went to Dublin later in 2015. That was great. Guinness is always great. Um, as I mentioned, we, we visited Montreal just two years ago, and now we're back here. We were in Florida last year, and kind of the thing we're looking to hopefully kind of, not necessarily announce here, but to put out the idea is we're hoping to do a conference next year in Brazil. So I know we, we tried, uh, maybe it was last year, and it just didn't work out. So hopefully this coming year, uh, we'll be doing one in Brazil. As we can see uh, later on in, in one of the slide decks, Brazil is definitely a big hotspot for CloudStack. So, and I would just personally love to get down to South America and get a chance to visit uh, where you guys are out of. I'm pointing to these guys up front here from Brazil, so. <laughs> All right, so this is not a technical presentation. Um, this is actually probably my first non-technical presentation in the CloudStack community. But I will mention a little bit about uh, virtualization here, just to kind of make an analogy for my next point. So we all kind of understand this concept around hardware, and you put the, the hypervisor on top of that, or if it's a type two hypervisor, maybe you put a host operating system on there, install KVM, then you've got your guest operating system, you got this stack kind of going for you. So that is kind of what we're looking at for today's, or this week's uh, conference venue. We've got kind of Apache as, at our lowest level, and on top of that is uh, where Apache Con sits. And then we're kind of the uh, guest operating system running on top of Apache Con. So off to the, the left there, we got our CloudStack Collaboration Conference. So it just kind of gives you an idea of what's all going on today and where we fit into this. 
Um, let's take a look a little bit at the timetable just to give you a feel for where, uh, where presentations are going to be happening uh, specifically around CloudStack. So today, uh, after this presentation, we've got two rooms going. We've got the talks in the ballroom, and we've got, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's Vigor or whatever that is. We've got two rooms here, basically, going all day. Uh, I should have probably asked Giles what the, how you pronounce that, but I didn't remember. So, <laughs> so the ballroom and that other one with a V and a C at the end. Uh, yeah, so two, uh, two tracks, basically, going on throughout the whole day. Um, that's today. It's pretty simple, just the two tracks. Tomorrow we got some ApacheCon keynotes that sort of take up the morning up until around 10.30. And then we're basically back into the same kind of a venue where we've got just the two ball, uh, the ballroom and the other room, which I will not say again, um, going on throughout the day. In the evening uh, tomorrow, we've got a reception going on at the, the beer market. So I'd really uh, encourage you to check that out. Wednesday is uh, pretty simple from a CloudStack standpoint. We've got a hackathon going on uh, for most of the day. So um, that would be great if we could get as many people as possible to kind of participate in that. Uh, we do a lot of these um, kind of conversations over the mailing list, and we do a really good job just kind of communi communicating with people that way. But it's really good to get a chance to actually sit down with everybody who you've typically just been speaking with over email the past six, seven months and just kind of do things face to face. Uh, sometimes you just get a lot more done that way. And uh, yeah, Thursday is all uh, kind of Apache Con talks, so nothing really cloud stack specific on that day, but just sort of wanted to point that out. All right. Well, I uh, wanted to thank our sponsor, Shape Blue. Um, these guys have been, I've known them for probably the whole six years that I've been in the CloudStack community. I think I've visited uh, Giles and Paul and those guys maybe four times in London. I was just at a CloudStack meetup in April. Um, and I think they just had one last week. So they, they do a lot of um, CloudStack meetups and uh, they're really just very active in the community. So. Uh, Maybe let's give a round of applause to Shape Blue for uh, sponsoring the CloudStack conference. All right. So, um, yeah, I guess just kind of mention some of the Twitter handles. As you're maybe going through the presentations today and uh, taking some pictures, making some comments on Twitter, uh, we're looking to maybe just kind of use CloudStack or CCC18 as our, as our Twitter handles. So uh, maybe keep that in mind as the, as the couple days progress. Okay, so one year. I'm actually referring to one year since the last CloudStack collaboration conference. So it's really more like, I don't know, it was April of last year. So it's almost been a year and a half. Um, so what I go through here is really gonna be a little bit of the, the, some of the stuff that we've covered in the past maybe 16 to 17 months since the last CloudStack collaboration conference in Miami. So what have we been doing? Uh, we've been busy with a lot of releases. So there's actually been at least four major releases in the past 16 months. Um, the major releases, so they pretty much, ever since CloudStack was donated to the Apache Software Foundation, the, the, the major, major release has been four. So they all kind of start with four. But what we consider major releases in the community, at least until we get to the 5.x release, is anything like 4.9, 4.10. So we've had actually four major releases in the past 16 months, two of which, the 4.9 and the 4.11 releases, are long-term uh, support, LTS releases. So um, a lot's been going on in terms of actually uh, releasing code that people are using in production environments. And in fact, right now we're in the process of working on 4.12. And there's, uh, well, we'll get into some of the features in a, in a couple slides from now. But I guess the main takeaway here is there's been a lot of good releases. We're, we're still developing um, code very vigorously in the CloudStack community. So it's, it's been a great environment uh, ever, you know, the whole, uh, the whole time since our last conference. So um, 
Let's just kind of talk about 4.11 for a little bit. This was the, uh, it's the most recent LTS release. And we actually delivered more than 250 new capabilities uh, for this particular release. I won't go through all of these in detail. And of course, that's just a small uh, handful of all of the different uh, features that went into the release. But there was probably a dozen, two dozen people working on all of these different features. And uh, the 4.11 being an LTS is especially important to customers because in some environments they, they just need to make sure that they're installing a, a software version that is going to be continuously revved uh, over the coming years. And uh, so a lot of times releases like 4.9, 4.11, the LTSs, they are especially critical to the CloudStack community's success. And it's great to be able to see that we were able to update not just this new 4.11 release, but also go back and update 4.9. So I think uh, the community has been very successful in, in their uh, releases over the past year and a half. Um, let's just take a look. So some of the, um, just an example of an improvement. There's been many, many improvements, but one of them that was um, kind of especially critical from a very general standpoint is improvement in how fast a virtual router can reboot. I mean, it sounds like a simple thing, just how fast you might be able to reboot something. But in this case, uh, we actually were able to drop the time down from um, you know, almost two minutes on VMware to 20 seconds, 44 seconds on KVM to around 26 seconds, and with Zen Server, around three minutes down to 30 seconds. So this is especially important around upgrades and things where you're consistently having to reboot these kind of devices. So this is just a very nice user experience improvement, and it's just one sample of a lot of the improvements that have gone in over the past year, year and a half. Uh, as I mentioned, we're uh, really busy with 4.12, and uh, this is, again, just a sample of some of the uh, features that are going into it. In fact, some of these uh, people will actually be giving specific uh, presentations about, for example, the, the backup and recovery framework. Uh, I think Paul is, let's see, Paul, I think you're doing that one, right? Yeah, and um, we have a whole bunch of uh, really interesting features that have gone in already to the 4.12 release. Now, we're not exactly sure when this particular release is going to go GA, but it's just good to see that we just kind of picked up where we left off on 4.11. We just kept that same momentum going into 4.12, and we've got a whole bunch of features already in the works. So, um, so that's always great to see. Now let's talk a little bit about CloudStack adoption. Um, the whole iceberg thing, maybe some of you already know kind of where we're going at with that, with this, but uh, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, let's first see if anybody knows what these numbers might indicate. Are there any guesses? It's all around CloudStack and adoption as a hint. 219, anybody have an idea? Users, okay, that's a good one. I'm not gonna say whether they're right or wrong here. I'm gonna go to the next page. All right, uh, how about the 116,000? Users. Maybe. <laughs> how about 21,000, anybody on that one? Users? <laughs> okay. Well, let's just see what it actually is. All right, so our known user list is actually 219. And that's what we were referring to as kind of that tip of the iceberg. Um, it's been really common in my experience, and uh, I've talked to many people at ShapeBlue and CloudOps and a whole bunch of people throughout the CloudStack community. There's a lot more than 219 CloudStack users running in production, but this is the known list. One of the main issues we, we have, and I'll, I'll get to it in a later slide, is that people, once they try out CloudStack, they're not always um, necessarily willing to advertise that they use it for either competitive uh, reasons or whatever. So we, we, we have a lot of reasons we've heard from people over the years why they can't kind of uh, say that they're using it publicly, uh, which makes this 219 users number much smaller than it really is in reality. So let's take a look at some of those other numbers and get a feel for what I mean. 
So in the last 12 months, our management server packages were downloaded. That's the 116,000 number. So they're, they're being downloaded. This is just over the course of the past year. So 116,000 times the, the management server software itself was downloaded. Um, and that was from 21,000, roughly 21,000 different IP addresses all, all around the world. So CloudStack is definitely being utilized very heavily, much more so than we would see from that 219 number. So that's the tip of the iceberg. The real user base is, is what you see, or what you don't see, rather, uh, below the, the surface of the ocean there. Uh, let's take a quick look at, um, at a map of the world just to get a feel for where CloudStack is the most, is the most downloaded. Um, I guess the United States ends up being uh, the most popular place that it's downloaded from, but it's also followed closely by China, Brazil, Europe, um, Canada, so Russia, Australia, it's all over. It's a very big distribution of CloudStack across the world. So it's, it's, um, it's very popular software, even if we can't always get uh, users to be, be in a position to claim that they use it. Uh, we've heard many different, I don't know, maybe call them excuses <laughs> over the years, but the, the point of the matter is CloudStack is being used very heavily. I, I speak with people in, in my job at, at SolidFire, now it's NetApp, uh, many times who have tried out things like OpenStack and um, just because of the complication, they decided to try out CloudStack and they tell me how how happy they are with CloudStack. So I know that's kind of anecdotal in that particular case, but it seems like it happens quite regularly in my experience. And I've talked to people from many companies like ShapeLoo, CloudOps, they seem to have the same sort of experiences. So CloudOps seem, uh, <laughs> CloudStack is very much alive and well. Um, I don't really know what to say about this particular slide, but it's very cool and I think Dog worked on it uh, quite a bit to draw all this data. So I'm going to put it up here for a second. This is just kind of an idea of how our uh, management server packages have been downloaded uh, per, I don't know if it's per month or whatever, over the past year or so. So you can see um, it's not exactly super easy to come out with uh, particular information from this. Maybe more after a release went out, you might have seen a heavier number of downloads. but. The slides will be available if anybody wants to take a look through this and kind of try to glean it for some more information. I just thought it was kind of interesting to have all of this information. Um, let's take a look at a quick cartoon. Uh, this is actually, I'm going to go ahead and read it directly, but it's the one guy saying that um, you know, he doesn't really know anything about um, CloudStack. He's not sure what the adoption rate is. He's a little tentative about uh, trying it out in his environment. And then somebody gets him to do it. After a few months, they've run CloudStack very successfully in production. And then we come back to them and say, great, it's working out. Would you, would you be OK doing a white paper or you know, some kind of um, publicity around it? And unfortunately, uh, for the majority of CloudStack users, it, it's something that they don't necessarily feel comfortable doing. So I guess the gist is I'd really like to encourage anybody who is using CloudStack in, in production, uh, even in, in their development environments, to help with whatever they do for their, for their business to see if it's uh, something that you're able to actually do to announce that you use CloudStack. Uh, because one of the things we've always had trouble with, I think, in, well, maybe Apache in general is around marketing. Uh, most of us are mainly interested, I know I am, in, in doing the technical stuff. But it, it is really important if we can do some, some work around marketing as well and just get people to understand that, that CloudStack is, uh, well, it just works as our, as our old uh, Twitter tagline used to say, CloudStack works. And it's very, it's very easy to use compared to many of the alternatives. So um, just one little quote here kind of that's in uh, line with this. We had uh, one user recently note that they spent four years and just millions of dollars 
installing OpenStack and trying to get their services up and running on that. Uh, and then only recently they decided to start again with CloudStack. Now, um, this is not one of my customers, but I have had probably a half dozen similar experiences in maybe the past year or two. So, um, yeah, it's just very interesting around the marketing aspect, how we just don't get out there and, and market CloudStack, but it's really a great uh, alternative to many other similar products. Um, all right, cool. So at this point, I'm going to stop talking for a little bit. We've got uh, three users who are going to come up and each do about 10 minutes talking a bit about their business, uh, what they use, why they picked CloudStack, what they use it for, and how that's been going for them. So um, our first is Mike from, uh, oh, Mike, there you are, from cloud.ca. Uh, doing that. So my name is Mike Garrow. I'm the VP of Product and Business Development at Cloud.ca. Just to gauge the audience here a little bit, how many folks here are familiar with Cloud.ca? Reasonable amount. People I work with didn't need to raise their hands, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what is Cloud.ca? So you've heard CloudOps mentioned a couple of times. So we were actually built and incubated originally in CloudOps since about 2014. Uh, and coming up on two years ago very, very soon, we were actually pushed out of the nest. Now, what does that mean? We became a separate company, a separate legal entity. We're still very closely associated and work very closely with the folks at CloudOps. But for all intents and purposes, Cloud.ca is its own separate company. What do we do? We provide cloud infrastructure as a service. We're essentially pure machine services. Uh, we get things like managed services, for example, when we need them from partners like CloudOps. So in that context, we provide compute, variety of flavors running on our compute clusters in various data centers. In addition to multi-tenant compute, we're also working on, and we'll have very shortly, bare metal servers as well. On the storage side, we offer a variety of flavors of block storage, uh, as well as object storage. So that kind of generally rounds out what cloud.ca has and does. Now, as all of you are very familiar, um, hyperscale environment has changed quite a bit over the last couple of years. And in fact, most of the news um, around cloud these days is around hyperscale providers. And they've all landed here in Canada as well. So in that context, why should anybody care about cloud.ca? Well, cloud.ca is a regional Canadian service provider. And we believe that even with everything that's happened with hyperscale providers, this is even more relevant today than it's ever been. Why? Well, Canadian data sovereignty. We're fully Canadian owned, fully Canadian operated. Um, you know, and in a world today where regulations and regulatory environment is becoming even more common, even more strict, and where we've got a bit of a, you know, somewhat tumultuous political climate in various places in the world, uh, Canadian data sovereignty is something that a lot of people are particularly interested in. So this is a big reason why something like cloud.ca matters, but there's more to it than that. When, when we meet customers, when we work with customers, we like to make sure they understand, and, and often this is exactly what they're looking for, is they can work with us as a partner rather than as a vendor. We're not somebody who's just taking their money to provide machine services, but we're somebody that's working closely with them and is really vested in the success and understanding what each of these customers does. 
we can also be a bit more flexible in terms of meeting their needs. If they need some specific custom configurations or something a little bit out of the ordinary, if they want to be supported in both official languages here, both French and English, we can do that. And essentially, we build relationships with our customers. And then finally, which is something that actually matters to, to quite a few people, is they don't have to deal with the exchange rate. We charge them Canadian dollars. It's a predictable spend. No fluctuation on a regular basis. So how do we work with CloudStack? So as you can see here, we have a variety of services in cloud.ca, the lion's share of which is orchestrated by CloudStack. All of our compute, our primary block storage. We also work with SwiftStack for our object storage. And while CloudStack is great and provides us a lot in terms of service orchestration, when it comes time to run a business, there's a lot more that you need to enable the business value that you're delivering. And this is very important to us in cloud.ca. Well, fortunately, from the beginning, we were able to work very closely with the team at CloudOps and develop something called CloudMC. So CloudMC is the layer that you see. It's essentially the northbound customer-facing layer that you see on top of the services orchestration here. And that is essentially providing people both their UI interface as well as API access to provide a lot of the important um, business logic, um, product-oriented things that you need to be able to run a service provider business. Things like reporting, things like billing, things like access control, um, provisioning, etc. This is all built into what we've developed in CloudMC. And interestingly enough, is built in a way where not only the things you see here can plug into it, but a variety of other things like that funny OpenStack thing that was mentioned earlier, as well as even plugging it into uh, hyperscale cloud providers. So it's quite flexible in what it does. But this is essentially how we leverage CloudStack. Now, why CloudStack? So I've got three separate bullets here, but in a way they're all kind of very intertwined. So efficiency. We felt that CloudStack, and this is proven out for us, would make it easier and more efficient for us to be able to operate, maintain, and update our cloud environment. And in fact, this has come to bear for us. Now, part of that comes in the fact that we're dealing with an open source platform. So if we hit a problem, well, we can tackle it and try and fix it, but that we is a lot bigger than just us at cloud.ca, right? It's the community. When we need something, sure, we can do it ourselves, but we're a small team, we're not a big team, but we have the power of the community to help us out. And I think over time, we've leveraged that community as well as, as given back very nicely to that community, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more. So I think that the combination of all of those things together made this, at the time, we chose to do it the right choice. And given our growth and where we stand today, definitely continues to be the right choice for us. And so we've contributed and, and been part of a number of projects in the CloudStack community and continue to work on these. Uh, a lot of these things are up here. I won't read them all. I'll let you go through them. Uh, I know one of them is actually having a talk. The first item there related to the, uh, our remote management VPNs and how we leveraged Ike V2 and in integration with Vault. There's going to be a talk on that, I believe, later today. But there's a variety of things, some of which are very interesting. We're, we're still fine-tuning our integration with MAS to provide bare metal in cloud.ca. These are all things that we've been working on, in some cases continue to work on. And then we've got a whole bunch of other things that we're continuing to work on, things like VM lifecycle improvement. So over the life of a VM, when you deploy it, you would hope your service provider environment grows a cluster that could be four or six hosts today could be eight or 10 or 12 in the future. Where does that VM end up as things grow, as you do maintenance, as you move things around, as you might have certain constraints? Maybe people have anti-affinity rules on that VM. Maybe it has a particular license associated with it. Maybe it's a Windows VM and, and it needs to be in a certain place or you want it to be in a certain place. We're working on things to improve that and automate it so that the life cycle of a VM can, can be done in a much more efficient fashion 
and isn't more of a, a manual task for our operations team at cloud.ca. And obviously that's something that as part of the community, other people will be able to leverage over time. So um, essentially that is it. Anybody who's interested in cloud.ca wants to try it out, trial.cloud.ca, be happy to, to let you do that. Appreciate it, thank you very much, and I will hand it off to the next one. Is it on? Oh, and now we got uh, Ingo from Intelligence. Right. Can I can switch over to presentation. Maybe it's actually um, right here. Um, Okay. Hello, welcome. So my name is Ingo Joachim. I'm working for Intelligence, and I'm have been asked to say something about our company, what we do with uh, CloudSec, and why do we do that. So just give an, a quick idea of that. Uh, so with Intelligence, we have uh, several service centers around the globe. So mostly, what we are doing is about SAP. So we either do work closely together with SAP or dealing with SAP software. So we uh, help customers to do the life cycle for SAP software, installing them, doing projects, consultancy, and so on. And as well, there that comes in where, where we come from. So we also have an infrastructure part there. So um, that means we are hosting um, SAP systems in our data centers globally, so we help them to yeah work on the special requirements they have and and run this and this is where we know like what what are special needs for running an SAP system. So for the for the um, infrastructure part, so we are helping also customers to get all the new requirements they have. So especially um, they have multi-hybrid uh, uh, scenarios coming up. So they need to answer the questions to the current questions also, how they scale into the future. So they have systems on site in their data centers and as well also in the, in the public cloud. And there we have yeah, special requirements and we know how this all fits together because we know about the infrastructure and we also know how the applications are running. So it's this in combination is quite important. So what, what are we doing with our cloud? So we have, I just put up uh, lots of SAP logos here. So because that's our main focus. So we, from running from uh, production systems, trainings, development and demo systems. So it's all the different varieties. So, um, we were using CloudStack to easily deploy uh, new installations, so especially let's say for the uh, development systems. So that we have like developers, they need to program an add-on for an SAP system, but who is installing the system for them so where they can try out and, and test. So this is where we like um, provide all the infrastructure for it, doing lots of um, automation to deploy it. So there will be a talk by tomorrow, so I we'll explain that more in detail how that works. And yeah, same with, with like training systems. So usually you need a consultant installing a system and so on, and we do that in combination. So we just need for like for training ten SAP installations, and we do that with CloudStack and also again with lots of automation behind. So um, yeah, why do we do that in this? private cloud uh, environment. So yeah, we put together lots of pieces, different technologies. In the middle is always cloud stack. So we have all the technologies around. And that means we have the full control on that. So we are not depending on other third party things or yeah, products changing. So that's why we have that all together. Um, then the SLAs are important, so you can imagine such a SAP systems is quite important. 
for the customer and yeah they're not all really cloud ready those applications so yeah it's not like just spinning up containers so it's like huge databases and so on that's not so easy to yeah handle that in a public cloud environment so that has some downsides here and the same as with the special use cases so we have um, you saw it on, the, on this slide before we have like this SAP HANA database which consumes like terabytes of memory. So those are also not available on public cloud providers with this really huge amount of, of memory. So going back to yeah, a few, few years ago when we thought, OK, we, you, we need a platform to, do, to, to run some, some virtual machines. So these are, these are some of the criteria that we came up with um, why we decided to go for CloudSec. So for example, the multi-tenancy. So we checked out several systems, but um, you were always available. Uh, it was always possible to like, run different projects and put different permissions on it and so on. But the problem was that like, doing all the user stuff and giving permissions was all on the administrator layer. And this was not like shared. So in CloudSec, you have the possibility to have that all separated, and you can easily give that in different customers' hand. Of course, um, yeah, multi-hypervisor support was was one of the key things we needed, and open source also makes it easy to uh, talk to your boss and say, okay, it's open source; it doesn't cost anything. Okay, coming to my next month to my last slide. Uh, yeah, I think it's I just picked up the CloudSec works again. So, um, so we are running CloudSec over four years now. So really successful. So I think that's nothing more to to say about that. Um, yeah, the the upgrade pass. I think this is one of the key key things which makes it successful. We saw it with other projects like, I don't know, OpenStack running or something like that. So we set up a huge project and dependencies between the models and, and so on in, in CloudSec. It's just, you just do it and it's, yeah. Uh, my colleagues, they have a talk also to how to upgrade it and it's done in 30 minutes, so easily. Yeah, and, and again, so, so we have a great community on CloudSec and it's, yeah, it's free and you can take your chance and, and just just work on that together with, with others. So that's that's about it. So thank you very much and have a nice time. Okay, our next is Andrea Panich from HIAG Data. And uh, let me get this on you. So, yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Andrea Panic. I work for Kiev Data. It's a Swiss uh, based uh, cloud company. And uh, I'll just give a small kind of introduction before I actually explain a few things about cloud stack. So, Kiev Data is basically a Swiss owned, uh, I like to say, kind of daughter company of the company here. They were in different kinds of business for the for last 120 years and more. Initially in the lumber or wood industry, then as the time changed by the move to the real estates. And actually that's uh, quite interesting uh, because of the next slide. 
uh, during this real estate uh, era of, of the company, they basically acquired a, a huge number of physical sites across all Switzerland. And what that actually did is uh, that enabled us uh, to, uh, at some point, uh, build a huge uh, fiber optic network, which is purely privately owned by HIAG. So this is not leased from, um, uh, let's say, a uh, uh, public telecom companies. It's really ownership of the HIAG. It's 100% private stuff uh, with certain SLAs, guaranteed latency, uh, with over uh, 99, point, uh, 99 times 100 gigabits in a backbone uh, network. And of course, we are uh, simply, uh, let's say, certified according to some of the re regulations, including the FIMO, which is very interesting for, for financial institutions, which needs to actually move their uh, workloads to the cloud. And um, that's uh, pretty much it. We have uh, some kind of remote connections to Amsterdam, Frankfurt, and some other uh, locations where actually I will use them to explain in another slides. <clears throat> now, the reason why we chose Cloud Stack, I believe the previous two companies explained very well. Uh, I didn't particularly prepare for this kind of presenting during this keynote, but I will just basically verbally explain. We already see all the nice bullet points, which are really true, it really works. It's easy to set up, it's easy to operate. Uh, I know a great guy who is actually a cloud consultant, consultant from some of the German company who told me that all the, uh, all the open stack projects that he's aware of, uh, in the last couple of years, they are still in the implementing state. Uh, something similar probably as Mike explained. By the way, you have the year 2019 in that slide. So. I don't want to change it, but yeah. Uh, basically, you know, that's the fact because the way cloud uh, the open stack is architectured, you need to point many pieces together, it's really hard. And cloud stack is very, I would say, integrated. The, the biggest uh, challenge is actually, and that's not a huge challenge, is just to make it fully redundant in the sense of management servers, load balancing stuff, but nothing special that you haven't done maybe with any kind of other web application, let's say. So, uh, basically, we started with Cloud Stack uh, December 2012. Um, we are not as big, uh, I would say, um, committers, and maybe not that, uh, we are not contributing that much to, to, the, to the product itself, in, certainly in comparison to some other guys, but we are uh, obviously a heavy consumer, and we did obviously a few stuff, we did commit a few stuff that were maybe interesting. Um, uh, so basically we are a public, uh, public uh, cloud provider and the focus is obviously on privacy and everything else that uh, Switzerland laws and obviously the technical things provide uh, within the cloud stack as well. And um, basically, I'm, I'm not sure if I should continue explaining why we choose cloud stack, that's already said, and in my presentation tomorrow you will actually be able to see um, I would say, from my point of view, pretty interesting story of the experience moving up, uh, how we grew us four years, what challenges we have, how we solve them, and so on. So it's very, hopefully, very interesting uh, one. Uh, now, uh, beside, uh, beside um, Cloud Stack, we do offer a couple of different services to our customers. Uh, so basically, uh, on the left, you see that we have, uh, via the previously explained uh, fiber optic network throughout the whole Switzerland, we are uh, enabling customer sites, this integration and so on. We basically, we are connecting remote premises to our private network. We are private network customers reach the cloud. And then inside the, let's say, cloud or the data centers, uh, we are very soon actually going to launch the container world. Uh, I believe beginning of the next year, we already do offer S3 compatible object storage, uh, uh, which is based on certain solution, but it's fully uh, I would say 99.9% .9 compatible on the protocol level, so a drop in replacement literally for the Amazon stuff. Uh, we do also operate some other, uh, let's say, cloud solutions based on Azure Stack, then also a custom built cloud for Zero, as we call it internally. And also, what, uh, what might be interesting for some customers is that we are about, uh, I believe, in October, if I'm not mistaken, we are about to launch uh, direct, direct private uh, peering connections to. Uh, Microsoft Azure and Office 365. So basically, customers will come through our private network, uh, through the uh, through the core of the network, and then up to the uh, via private fetch and connections, basically to the uh, Microsoft data centers in Amsterdam, I believe. 
uh, this will end up in Amsterdam. So basically, we are uh, able to uh, to offer a guaranteed latency from uh, customer locations via cloud uh, via optical network up to the public cloud providers, which is which I just mentioned. And that's uh, I believe that's um, we are as far as I was told. <laughs> We are basically the only provider that has this kind of connection to, to at, at the moment, Microsoft services, but I believe the other public vendors will come soon as well. Uh, Microsoft is, by the way, sponsoring our lunch, so I hope that's fine <laughs> that I mentioned them so much. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so Mike, I use only three minutes, six minutes. That's perfect. Not enough uh, for, or maybe enough. It's no, it's perfect. Time. But yeah, anyway, uh, if you're interested more in, in the cloud stack story and our experience, which is not everybody sharing the dirty laundry in sense of a bad experience with certain issues and how we solve them, something is wrong from our side, some things are being improved, please join me tomorrow at 11.04 in, uh, in this room and uh, there are some very interesting demos as well. Uh, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. So um, I know we're a little behind here, so let me quickly tie this up, uh, wrap this up. Um, so anyways, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, kind of getting the point across here that we've just got a great community going for us in the CloudStack community. Let's keep that going. Um, in particular this week, let's, let's really... Uh, work on sharing ideas with each other, working with each other, wh whether it's at the hackathon or in between presentations. Uh, just get to know each other face-to-face uh, -face and have a really uh, good time this week. One thing I would like to mention, and we didn't uh, point it out earlier, is that in addition to Cloud, uh, in addition to Shape Blue being uh, a sponsor for this particular conference, CloudOps is also a, a big sponsor for the conference. Um, I've known the guys at CloudOps, just like the ones at Shape Blue, for five, six years now. It's, it's a great uh, company located here, as we mentioned many times during the presentation, right in Montreal. So we really appreciate those guys uh, sponsoring the, the CloudStack events that they have over the, the, the years, uh, in particular this week, but over the course of the past five, six years as well. So. How about a quick round of applause for CloudOps as well? Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, basically I don't have a whole lot of time left here, so um, let's just keep uh, keep this going uh, uh, throughout the week and uh, in, into the future. So thanks a lot, everybody, and uh, kind of have to wrap it up here. I think we're behind schedule. Thanks.